The top 1% of dropshippers all use these tricks I'm about to reveal to you. And if you've ever wondered what separates the pros from the noobs, then this is it. When I first got started with dropshipping, I was always wondering how are these guys making five figures per day when I could barely crack $100. I had been fired from my job, my bank account was dwindling and I was facing uncertainty. But that is when I discovered dropshipping. Since then, I've generated over $10 million in sales and spent countless of hours researching, testing and figuring out what works and what doesn't. And in the process, I've discovered over 10 little known hacks that the top 1% dropshippers use to separate themselves away from the rest. And in this video, I'm gonna reveal them all to you. So grab a pen, a piece of paper, and stick around to the end because the last ones are certainly game changers. So with all that being said, let's get started. So the first tip is using a private agent. Now you may be familiar dropshipping with AliExpress, but the pro dropshippers are not using this when they are scaling. Instead, what they're using is a private agent. A private agent is someone who's based in China and they will give you faster fulfillment, cheaper prices, and also faster shipping. Now this sounds unfair, right? The truth is anyone can get one of these agents. However, you will need to be doing anything from 20 to 30 orders per day for them to be able to take you on as a client. Once you have an agent, you'll be using an app called Dian Xiaomi that connects directly from your Shopify store to the supplier, meaning that they can automatically fulfill the products for you as soon as they come into your store. You wanna remember that AliExpress is just a means to test. You only wanna be using it for testing products. Once you validate something that actually works, you then need to move to a private agent so that you can scale and gain all of those benefits. The second tip that pro dropshippers do is they farm engagement. This is where you encourage people to comment on your ad, but not directly on the ad itself. See, Facebook have a policy and it's against the policy to tell people on your advert to comment down below, like, or tag a friend. However, you can do it in a very sneaky way. So once your advert actually goes live and you publish it, what you then want to do is take your page and comment on that post. What you can also do is comment on the post from other profiles that you may own. You can add on there such as a question if you wanted to, or alternatively, you could put in the comments a testimonial to boost that social proof. When people see an ad with comments, the first thing that they do is they go and check the comments and see what people are saying. Another thing that you should do is always ask a question to people who are commenting on your adverts. You can do this, for example, if you are selling a pet product and someone comments, you can ask them a question such as, hey, thanks for tagging and commenting, what pet breed do you have? This then encourages people to reply back with a picture of their dog or with a comment of what their dog breed is. And these mini conversations that happen on your advert are gonna be seen as a positive signal to Facebook. This then in turn can lower your CPMs and your ad costs. Now the third tip is making sure that you are always upselling. Now upselling is basically a way to squeeze money out of every single customer and visitor to your website. If you are not doing this, you are leaving tons of money on the table. The first way you can do this is by using bundles. Now you can use the product variants to get people to purchase more of a product. For example, if they purchase three of an item, you give them a bigger discount. This again, in turn is going to squeeze as much money and incentivize people to spend more money on your store. Now there are many different bundling apps out there, but you don't need to use any of them. You can literally do and achieve this inside of your product page by just using the variants. Another way is using post-purchase upsells. This is where you show people a one-time offer after they've purchased the products. Now, since they've already purchased the product for you, they're gonna be more likely to buy something else that you have to offer. On top of that, since you've already acquired the sale, it's basically free money. I personally like to use an app called One Click Upsell, which is OCU for short. And a real simple strategy that works and converts is just offering the person the exact same product that they've just purchased, but at a discounted price. The fourth tip is utilizing credit cards. When I first got started with dropshipping, I would avoid all credit cards, mainly because I didn't understand how they actually work. And most people, when they hear credit cards, they think of the word debt. But the thing is, there's good debt and then there's bad debt. By utilizing credit cards, you have two key benefits. The first thing is points. So if you're using Amex, which is what I personally use, they will give you points for all of the spend that you make on your credit card. You can then take these points and redeem them for things such as airplane tickets or hotel stays. So you can basically, in theory, travel for free. Since you were already going to spend that money anyway, it makes no sense to put them on a debit card when you can put them on a credit card and get something out of it. The second big benefit is cash flow. Usually Usually you'll get around 30 days to pay off your credit card balance, which means you can spend upfront on your adverts and then pay it off as soon as you've got your money from the payment processor. This is going to give you some cash flow breathing space, especially if you have any type of holds or rolling reserves on any of your accounts. The fifth tip is creating and implementing a reassurance email flow. One of the biggest mistakes that people make when they get into dropshipping is they don't inform the customer what's happening. Of course, people are gonna dispute and email you a ton of times 
if they don't know what's going on if they've purchased from your website and don't hear nothing for 15 days then of course they're going to be upset so instead what you should set up is a customer reassurance flow and this is going to email the customer at different key stages in the process so that they know what's going on doing this first and foremost is going to lower the amount of customer support tickets that you receive and second of all the customer is going to get a better experience now in order to actually set this up you can use something called Clavio, which is an app that you can install on your shopify store and you just want to work out on average how long it takes from someone to purchase the product to then actually it being delivered and you can then set out and schedule emails to go at different intervals in that time process now if you want me to personally help you to start and scale your own dropshipping business then click on the link down below and apply for my coaching mentorship program to see if you'd be a good fit with that being said let's jump back to the video the sixth tip is spying on successful shopify stores and finding out how much money they're making to do this i like to use a tool called shop hunter rather than testing out random products that you don't even know are making sales or not it's best to use shop hunter and identify whether or not it's making sales this way you can actively see if people in the market are purchasing it this will save you tons of time with trying to just spam test and hope that something will just work out if you look at some of my more recent videos you'll see how i've been using this tool to identify whether or not i should sell a product or not now if you want to test out shop hunter for yourself if you use the code beast 25 then you'll get 25 percent off your subscription for life onto the seventh hack and only a few people know about this hack that i'm about to reveal to you if you're dropshipping and you're using paypal eventually you will get disputes however there is a little trick that you can use to try and avoid disputes being open before they even happen. You wanna go into your PayPal account and go to account settings, then account preferences, and there'll be something there that could be called customer service message. This is a message that will show to people before they open or pay dispute. Now in there, what you can do is you can put in information to help them get in contact with you before they actually open a dispute. This way you can resolve the issue without going through PayPal and hurting your account. This eighth tip is again, another one that not a lot of people know about. Did you know that China has its own TikTok platform? Well, they do, and it's called Du Yin. On there, you can find untapped winning products that no one else is selling, because naturally, stuff will usually go live in China before it makes its way over to the West. Now, to actually get an account, you may need to speak to one of your Chinese suppliers so that they can open it for you, because the platform itself is all in Chinese. Now, you may be thinking, okay, if it's all in Chinese, how on earth am I even going to be able to navigate it? Well, it's pretty simple. You've just got to open up Google Translate, type in what it is you want to search for and paste it into the search bar. You can use a bunch of different keywords in there and find video footage that no one else is using that you can scale with. So now that we've come to the ninth tip, this is something called native dropshipping. This is where you create a Shopify dropshipping store in a non-speaking English country. For example, like Denmark, Sweden, or Germany. Now you may be thinking that sounds great, Harry, but I can't speak any of these languages. The best thing is you don't have to because there's a lot of free online translators that you can use such as DeepL to translate everything for you. Because you're selling in a non-English speaking country, you have much less competition away from the top dropshippers, meaning that you can make a significant amount of profit in these smaller countries. Take Denmark, for example. You don't need any special payment processes either. You can run it up just using Stripe and PayPal. To make it work, all you've simply got to do is just find something that's already working in those top for big English speaking countries, translate it and print money. Arriving at the 10th final tip, and this is making sure that you've got great product images and product titles. See, one of the first things that the customer sees is your product images and your product titles. You therefore have a split second to make a lasting impact on them and get them to read the rest of the product page. If you don't do that, then you'll lose the sale and you won't have a great conversion rate. So if you've got a boring white background images and a dead product title, the chances of the person just bouncing off your website is extremely high. Instead, you wanna find the best photos that demonstrate the product in action. So for example, if you're selling a kid's product, then you wanna try and find a image that represents a mother playing and interacting with the kid. This is gonna have a higher conversion rate than just something with a white background. Another little key trick that you want to do is making sure that you add the benefits of the product onto the images. You have to remember that most people who land on your product site are not going to go further than looking through the images. So if you put some of the key benefits on the actual image itself, people are gonna scroll through them and get all of the information that they need to be able to make a decision. You can use free tools such as Canva, or if you're more experienced, you can use Photoshop. 
And to get a better understanding of what I'm trying to explain here, just go to Amazon and have a look at Amazon sellers. They do this very, very well. Moving on to the product title, you don't want something that's just dead. You need something that's gonna capture the attention and get people to continue to keep on reading. For example, if you're selling something like a neck massager, don't just call the product title a neck massager. You could rename it to something along the lines of eliminate neck pain instantly. This way is going to encourage people to continue to keep on reading since you've captured the attention. So that's it. By now you should have all of the information that you need need to make it happen. This is all of the information that I personally wish I had when I first got started with dropshipping. All you have to do now is just make it happen. If you want me to personally help you to start and scale your own dropshipping store, then click the link down below and apply for my coaching and mentorship to see if you'd be a good fit. Don't forget to smash a like on this video for the algorithm and make sure you subscribe to the channel as well. Your boy is trying to get to 100,000 subscribers this year. So happy boy out and subscribe so that you stay up to date with all of my latest content. But that is it for this video. Take care and I will see you.